Every time fall rolls around, I get reinvigorated about the idea of hammering out some more work on the Lowbuck diesel truck. Right now I'm waiting on some parts for the one ton Land Rover, so this feels like a great opportunity to make a little bit of progress on my 82 Gladiator. I need to build an instrument cluster and a dash for this Jeep truck. And the shapes that I'm seeing in my head are not gonna be easy to replicate or produce. So I think that it makes a lot of sense to start with smaller projects because I just need more seat time with the bead roller. And uh, one of those smaller projects is gonna be some door panels. To be honest, I think that beginner projects like door panels and kick panels are actually a lot more fun just because it's a lot lower consequence. And if you mess up, you're not having to scrap an entire work piece you're just scrapping a sheet, you go get another sheet, and you bend some cool designs into it. Believe it or not, Instagram is actually a really good source of information on how to do these panels. And there's a lot of really inspirational creators on there that you could probably pick up a thing or two from. I myself have actually picked up a lot of inspiration from Instagram. And if you follow hashtags like hashtag bead roll or hashtag sheet metal fab, there's a lot of really good creators and a lot of really good inspiration that you can find if you're looking into projects like this. Now the process that we're gonna use today is I'm just gonna start by measuring the size of our panel and then I'm gonna make a design on a blank sheet. After I've made the design and I've decided that it's something that I think that I can do and it's something that I think is gonna look good, then I will take it to the bead roller. And for those of you that are new and you don't know what a bead roller is, it's basically just a couple of different shaped dies. You put a piece of material in it and then whenever you squeeze it down, you can uh, step down or step up your material and you can create some really amazing designs and just some art, some serious art with a tool like a bead roller. Then once we're all done, I'll trim away any access that I have and uh, then we will pick out where we're gonna drill it. I'm gonna use what's called riv nuts with some quarter inch stainless steel button head hardware. And I think that it's gonna be a really nice finish whenever we're all buttoned up. I wanna build these panels out of some aluminum. I've got something that's approximately 18 gauge laying around here. So I'm gonna use that because I just have it readily available. I like aluminum because it's light, it's easy to work with. And at the end of the day, I don't have to paint it if I don't want to. I've got a bunch of small chunks of scrap laying around that I'm gonna test some designs that I have in my head to make sure that it's something that I can do. Then I'm gonna lay out these designs on our panel and put it in the bead roller. Due to the fact that I don't use a bead roller very often, I'm gonna start with a practice panel to try to re-warm up what skills I have. I'm starting with this diamond-shaped cross-hatched pattern that I've seen a lot on Instagram and I think looks sweet when implemented correctly. So the dies that I chose for this task is I guess what you'd consider a knife edge upper forming die and what a lot of people in the industry call a roller skate wheel lower die. It's just a round piece of polyurethane that has a little bit of give in it. To finish off this crosshatch pattern, I'm using a set of offset dies to give it a really nice step all the way around the pattern we just made. I've been experimenting and gaining a little bit of confidence with this machine and I don't think it looks too bad. Looks like a beginner, but I think that this is just an experimental piece, of course. I think that whenever I do the real piece, um, I've got a little bit more experience under my belt and I could probably make it look halfway decent. So I have a plan now. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim out, if you look close, you'll see I have this laid out as a panel for the door. Um, I'm gonna trim it out, I'm gonna drill a hole for the door latch, I'm gonna drill a hole for the window roller upper, and then I'm gonna bolt that onto the Jeep, and then I'm gonna put these little beauty panels that I wanna make on top of that. So a lot of times people will incorporate designs like this directly onto the door panel. Um, this lower one is gonna end up being some inverted dimple dies and whatnot, but I don't have the skills yet in order, or the tooling actually, in order to make shapes like this, have it distort, and then straighten it out in a way that I'll be proud of. So what I'm gonna do is bolt this onto the door. I'm gonna make some little panels like this that I can straighten out off car, and then I'm gonna bolt this down over it. I think that that's the best compromise in order to get a halfway decent look 
and also not push my beginner skill set so much that I end up burning through a whole bunch of material because I just keep destroying large pieces of material. There are multiple ways to cut thin aluminum, and my favorite is definitely the shear. My second favorite is probably the plasma cutter, and my third favorite would be just a good old-fashioned bandsaw with a wood blade. But if all you have is a jigsaw, a skill saw, or a chop saw, wood blades work great for cutting aluminum. You just gotta be really careful when you do it and take your time. If you've watched the channel before, you know I'm a huge fan of dimple dies. So to add a little bit of flavor to this door, I'm gonna use these swag punches to punch some holes in the lower portion of this door, and then I'm gonna dimple out these holes with a set of dimple dies. This doesn't do anything but add to the visual aesthetic and give it a different feel and a little bit more variety to the inside of this truck. I suppose you'd call this lower panel a kick panel, just because it's down by your feet, but I'm not exactly sure. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna move on to is gonna be this upper panel. We'll just call it the shoulder panel, because it's gonna be close to where my shoulders are gonna set. So the shoulder panel is gonna look very similar to this. Um, I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I definitely want a smaller flange all the way around, and then the finished product will be a little bit rounded. And like I said, this was a piece of scrap. It's super thin. I'd like to go a little bit thicker. Uh, same thickness as this bottom one, just uh, which is the same thickness as this back one. I drilled out these holes. Everything fits up exactly where it should. I'm gonna need to trim a little bit off the edges, which is no big deal. And then I'm gonna take that sander, I'm gonna rough, off, rough up this, uh, this background surface as well. If you're really skilled and you have a lot of experience working with aluminum, it is definitely worth the time to buff it out to an almost mirror-like finish. It looks outstanding, but for someone with my skill set, I like to rough up the surface a little bit to hide the imperfections and to hopefully mask some of the damage that this door panel is going to see as I use it in this pickup truck. In many cases, you can just go out and buy a new set of door panels for whatever rig you're looking for. But finding a set of door panels for this old Jeep truck is super hard. And the stuff that I did find was extremely expensive. You can actually buy the set of tools that it takes to do a job like this and make one of a kind door panels for the same cost as it is to try to find something that's in decent shape or something new. Plus, at the end of the day, I really like building stuff like this. I'm sure a lot of you guys are watching this channel because you do too. So I think that it's fun to go out, get the tooling you need, build one of a kind parts, even if it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the easy way to do it. project is humming right along. I'm about to mount this door panel completely for the first time. So what I've done here in order to make it to where I can mount it is I've put these things called rivnuts nuts in here. If you've watched the channel before, there's no doubt you've seen me use rivnuts nuts on the channel. But for those of you who are newer to the channel, you use this tool right here. You drill a hole, you push the riv nut into the hole, and then whenever you expand it, you expand the rivet, it will give you, here's a piece, it'll give you a place to mount some quarter by 20 hardware. I like quarter, quarter by 20 stainless steel hardware. I use this stuff a lot just because I like the look of it. And uh, this is gonna be what I secure the panel to the door with. Now, a little quick tip. Well, two little quick tips, actually. This stuff, can these can spin on you. 
I have done it in the past where I've just used silicone or whatever I have laying around, but whenever I remember, I will go to the store and I will get some construction adhesive and you put this around it and then whenever you expand the rivet and that adhesive dries, it's much less likely that this rivet's gonna spin on you later. I've had a couple of them spin in the past and it's kind of a pain. So this is tip number one. This will help keep it from spinning. Tip number two is to lubricate the threads. So I've got a little bit of ball joint grease down there. Usually I use anti-seize, but I just happen to be out of anti-seize at the moment. So I, whenever I use, um, here's a piece that I've already used. Whenever I use a piece of hardware like this, I will put a little bit of ball joint grease on it. And then whenever I thread it in, it'll lubricate those threads and ball joint grease is gonna hang out there pretty much forever. So this will help keep it from spinning on me in the future as well. So the next step is going to be this Dynamat-ish <laughs> sound deadening stuff. I like this kind of thing. Um, you don't have to go over every hole. It will help insulate sound a little better if you go over every hole in the door, but mostly this is gonna help reduce the amount of vibration and whatnot in the door. So I'm gonna cut this up and place it around in a way that makes sense. And uh, I will have this stuff in an Amazon shopping cart as well as the tool for this, for those of you who are curious about it, for this, uh, this rib nut tool. The next step after I put the insulation on is gonna be mounting this panel and then figuring out how I want to mount these beauty panels. Extra steps like door insulation and stainless steel button head hardware is not necessary for every build. But in my opinion, it's really nice to have a finished product that looks professional and doesn't rattle around when you're driving down the road. Now that I've cleaned up part of the shop, let's take a look and see what you think. I don't hate it. You know, I, I didn't like it as I was building it, <laughs> believe it or not, but I like it better now that it's installed. I think that it matches the character of the truck really well. There's gonna be, the, the whole dash and everything is gonna be built out of aluminum that I'm gonna scuff up in the same way. So much of the interior is going to match this style in the future. Um, so, but for now, I think that it, it matches the character of the truck fairly well. You know, it's not a, nothing is perfect on this. It's definitely built by someone who's brand new to bead rolling, but I think that uh, it's passable. When you look at the truck that it's on, I mean, <laughs> this truck's in rough shape. So having a uh, door panel that isn't exactly perfect, it doesn't stand out too bad. Now I've got a couple other things that I need to figure out. One is gonna be a, a handle so you can shut the door. I don't want to mount this ugly plasticky thing back on there. So I'm going to make something out of aluminum. I'm going to make something from scratch and I think I'm going to mount it up high right up here because I don't want it to be anywhere near my knee or anywhere near my shoulder. So something up high. I think I also might be building a custom door latch or door opener and then a custom window roller upper. Something to match the overall look and feel of this panel. So I've got some ideas in my head, but I need a few weeks to just stew about it, just think um, how I would build those things and what I want them to look like. The other door is something that I'm gonna be tackling, not on camera, because as you can see, someone like welded the door latch and whatnot to that. So I'm gonna have to cut those into, I'm gonna have to cut those off just so I can even deal with this panel. So whenever I was building this panel, I built the other side. So all the bead rolling and everything's done, I just need to install it. I hope you guys are enjoying some of these videos where I'm just exploring these blind spots that I have in my fabrication skill set. This is something that I have very little experience doing and I am loving every minute of learning this new skill. I can't wait to slowly build these skills up to where I can bead roll all kinds of crazy stuff. Again, if you check it out on Instagram or I'm sure Facebook has different pages, there's just some super skilled fabricators out there and it's so motivating for me to get to that next level. Two more things I definitely wanna bring up before we end this video. One would be the fact that even as a beginner fabricator or a beginner bead roller or whatever, you can still have fun and you can make projects like this. This wasn't that hard of a project to do. I just saw a whole bunch of pictures online and replicated what I had seen online. So if you are thinking of doing bead rolling, this is proof 
that if you get a machine that helps you out a little bit, I think that this one did a pretty good job, you can definitely get your foot in the door and you can have a lot of fun with a machine as a beginner. Also, you don't have to get the best machine Eastwood makes. Eastwood also makes um, a bead roller, a small one that goes on top of a, a vise, and it's like 107 bucks. So you can go mild to wild like any other tool set. And if you're creative and you're determined, you can definitely make some cool projects for your build. The second thing I wanna bring up is the fact that this is still low buck. The theme of this build is low buck diesel truck. If I would've went out and bought a set of door panels for this, it would be hundreds of dollars. There's no good used ones. I've looked before. They're, these trucks don't get a whole lot of love in the aftermarket um, support arena. So being able to build a set of door panels, I think that this was probably 50 bucks or less, somewhere in that range. So um, I think that that is still very much low buck. We added a bunch of character and flair to this truck. And I'm excited to share these ideas that I have rolling around my head for the rest of the interior with you guys as we slowly build out this truck. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of how-to content on here. I work on every make and model brand of whatever as long as it goes off-road. <laughs> so if that's the kind of thing you're into, make sure you subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, you can go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, net gators. We have a link to our Patreon account. So if uh, you want to help support the channel, you can find all that stuff at our website. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Your Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.